He did not look good doing it. He says he's ready for this one, wants the title shot against Alexis Arguello. So we'll be back for the first round of this important NABF lightweight championship bout in just a moment. and Jose Luis Ramirez. Ramirez the challenger for the NABF championship, which was lifted by Ray Mancini from Jorge Morales here on CBS back in May. Ramirez in the ring is the champion of Mexico. He's won 53 and lost only twice, according to the promoter, 47 knockouts. And listen to the welcome for Ray Boom Boom Mancini. the excellent boxing southpaw from Mexico, Jose Luis Ramirez. And now for the ring introductions, let's join the announcer, Bob Ross. Bring you the main event. Scheduled 12 rounds for the North American Boxing Federation Lightweight Championship. The challenger weighing 133 and a half pounds from Guadabampo, Sonora, Mexico. The lightweight champion of Mexico. Third ranked WBC lightweight. His record, 53 and two with 47 knockouts. Jose Luis Ramirez. Ramirez. The champion from Youngstown, Ohio. except in his own corner. He's 22 years of age from Huadabampo, Sonora, Mexico. Some of his people claim he is related to Fernando Valenzuela, the Dodger pitching star. That's never really been verified, but they are from the same area in Sonora. He won the Mexican title, but it was vacant in June of 1979 with a knockout of Batillo Gutierrez. Has defended it three times. He's been a professional since the age of 14. And thus, that 53 and two record According to the promoters, many of those fights unverified here in the United States as they took place in Mexico. We're ready for round one. The referee is Joey Bishop. The judges are from Youngstown and Girard, Ohio, a Youngstown suburb, Billy Tanner and Tony Mariana. And Joey Bishop, the referee, is from nearby Struthers, Ohio. Ten-point must system in effect. A 16-ounce a 16 uh, foot, foot ring. Uh, Gil, and I wanted to ask you about that. Does it mean an advantage to either fight? Well, it should mean an advantage to Mancini because as we said, he asked the crowd, the other fellow, make him fight inside. And in the small ring, he should be able to do that. 
Now, you know, you would wonder why Ramirez would take a fight in the other fellow's hometown with everybody rooting against him. But his trainers are very, very confident. They feel that he can beat this kid no matter where he fights. Him. As a matter of fact, one of them last night said he may even stop this in the first round. Well, the crowd you can expect will be cheering every punch by Ray Boom Boom Mancini. He landed his first body shot and got the expected reaction. The and first Indian Green and Jose Luis Ramirez in burgundy colored trunks. The first round is usually a feel them out round. And that's exactly what they're doing right now. They're kind of pawning each other. Waiting, waiting to see what the other man's going to do. Waiting to see if uh, the other man's going to punch hard or if he can hit hard or find out a lot in the first round. Between the first and second round, there will be a lot of strategy talk uh, in the corners. A little, little blood from the nose of Ray Mancini as he landed a long right hand to the face of Ramirez. And there has been some talk about the fact that uh, Mancini has a little trouble with his nose bleeding rather readily. Unofficial reports say that Mancini did right hand by Mancini. Jose Lewis and Ramirez moved out. Mancini landing another right hand, sending Ramirez to the ropes. Unofficial reports say that Mancini's had a cold, and that could be the cause of his uh, nosebleed. When you have a cold, you uh, blow your nose a lot, and you uh, wipe it with Kleenex and everything that uh, causes the break. Mancini with the pressure, Ramirez with a counterpunching. We'd like to alert our local stations along the line at the end of this round number one. We'll be taking a 30-second station break. Tim, not only did Ramirez counterpunch that time, he, he made a beautiful move to move outside of Mancini. That's the way he has to fight Mancini. Under a minute to go, round number one. Tim Ryan, Sean O'Brady, Joe Clancy ringside, live from the Packard Music Hall in Warren, Ohio. And this is certainly the biggest sports event that this town has ever seen. Less than 30 seconds to go. I know it's early yet, but Mancini has got to cut off that ring. At this point, he's not cutting off the ring. He should be step stepping to his side instead of right straight ahead. Also, he seems to become, when, when he throws that left hand shoe and he leaves his face wide open. We'll be back with round number two of this 12-round championship fight after these words from the local station. This is number one with Mancini landing the better of the blows. That one sending Ramirez back into the ropes, the best punch of that first round. Mancini with a right hand. As I said, the first round is usually a feel them out round, and uh, this one was no different. But the crowd really roared when Mancini just threw a, a small punch, and they didn't do anything when uh, Ramirez threw any kind of punch. Round number two scheduled for 12. It's a 12-round bout because it is for the North American Championship. The champion is Ray Mancini, the challenger, Jose Luis Ramirez. Ramirez, however, ranked number three in the world by the WBC. Mancini, number seven. And that's getting WBC. An uppercut left hand landing from Mancini. Ramirez has not opened up at all as yet. He hasn't thrown any combination. He hasn't put two hands together. He's really still trying to feel Mancini out and find out just what he has to do. It's typical of an old professional who's been around a long time. Solid left hand from Mancini, and that rocked Ramirez. It, it sure did. He's hurt right now. That was some left hook. Ramirez never saw it coming. That's why he got hurt so bad with the punch. Left hooks have been known to work against southpaws because they stand away from your left hook. John, you talked about Ramirez's experience. 55 fights, and yet he's only 22 years of age. He's been fighting as a pro since he was 14. Here's David Wolf, the manager of Ray Mancini, looking on from the corner. He is trained by Murphy Griffith. Mancini is reaching in, and I'm surprised that Ramirez hasn't tried to drop that straight left hand on him as yet. Mancini right now seems to be putting the bull on Ramirez. Ramirez, very contained, very stoic appearance in the ring, not unlike his countryman, Patino Flake. Another left hook from where Mancini landed. That bloody nose of Mancini is really bleeding now, and uh, it hasn't been hit on that much. I'm surprised that it's bleeding this early that much. The, the heat from the lights could be adding to that uh, good combination by Mancini. Could be a adding to the uh, thinness of the blood right now. Combination landed by Mancini seconds ago. It is quite a day for lightweights and Warren. These two in the ring. John O'Grady, the WBA champion, is here with us. Alexis Arguello, the WBC champion in attendance. And the former lightweight champion, Roberto Duran, is also here. 
Less than a minute to go in round number two. Again, we'd like to alert our stations along the line at the end of this round. We'll be taking another 30-second station break. Ramirez has picked up the pace now. He's put a little more snap in his punches, Tim. An uppercut left from Ramirez inside landed to the chin of Mancini. Not a whole lot of sting on it. That's in 30 seconds to go, round two. Mancini has still given Ramirez a lot of room, even in this second round. He's got to ask you about that, John. He's, he's boxing like he did against uh, Morales. So far, he hasn't tried to get inside. And when he gets uh, Ramirez on the ropes, he, he steps back, lets him off. All right, we'll be back with round three after these words from your local station. This is... Coming here on CBS, you'll see his return to the ring after the famous no moss fight against Sugar Ray Leonard. He'll be meeting Nino Gonzalez at 154 pounds, August 9th, here on CBS. Training uh, nearby Orwell, Ohio, about 20 minute drive from here. The fight will take place in Cleveland. Then we round had, number three. We Gil had observed earlier that there's no rosin in the ring. And Ramirez's uh, manager went over to the commission and said, what about rosin? He said, my fight is slipping all over the place. Maybe that's one of the things that, that has kept Ramirez from getting off at all. But there isn't any rosin here. And that could be a big factor. It's very tough for a guy to fight when he can't get his footing. Ramon Felix is the manager and trainer of Ramirez. A good point about that is that Mancini's got on rubber soles, which do not slip on his canvas uh, mat. Jose Luis Ramirez has on leather soles. You can be sure Mancini knew the ring well here in Warren, Ohio. It is only 16 feet inside the ropes. They are rubberized ropes, three-stranded. Not exactly the best that we've have seen in our CBS boxing coverage. Hopefully they won't be a factor in the fight. Mancini scoring to the body and then a good right jab. Snaps his head back from Ramirez. Ramirez has an excellent jab, but so far he's not been able to use it to any real effect. Ramirez's concentration is good. He has very, very good form. Good concentration, but he just isn't fighting enough. Mancini's doing the fighting. Mancini landing the combinations again. There is Mrs. Mancini looking on at ringside, his mother. He wants to win that world title for his father, Lenny Boom Boom Mancini. He missed his opportunity back in 1939. He fought a 10-rounder against then-champion Sammy Angott, was promised a title shot, went off to the war, and never received that title opportunity. Ray has promised to win the world championship for him. Good left hook to the body for Mancini. Didn't seem to move from there at all. And they have quite a family gathering here. Uh, Mancini's grandfather came over and introduced himself to me. He looks younger than you do. <laughs> yes, I agree. Under a minute to go, round three. And again, that nose of Mancini is bleeding. That nose, blood, bloody nose is bad. They won't stop it on a bloody nose, but uh, it's bad because that blood goes down your throat and uh, you, you have a hard time breathing, very hard time breathing. And it also goes in your mouth. Punching a little more effectively and getting that jab in now. We're in the third round of the scheduled 12 rounder. Mancini threw 110 punches around in the Morales fight through nine rounds. That's finally uh, stopping Morales in the ninth. Under 30 seconds to go. In round three. He is a punching machine. I think his pace has been somewhat under that. There's that jab of Ramirez scoring. Well, as, as Sean pointed out, he's staying outside a little too much. He's got to get inside. Final seconds of the third round. I'm going to let you know a little surprise. Taste. This is round number four from Warren, Ohio. We are live with the NADF. Lightweight championship, Tim Ryan, Gil Clancy, and Sean O'Grady here at ringside. Ray Mancini, the champion, on the left of your screen. Jose Luis Ramirez from Mexico, now on the left of your screen. As we see it, Mancini has won the first three rounds. The judges, of course, have their own view. They are from Ohio, Billy Tanner and Tony Mariana. The referee, Joey Bishop, will also figure in the scoring on the 10-point must system. Ramirez and 
superb physical condition. We watched him work out this week. He hardly broke a sweat. Going three or four rounds, shadow boxing, hitting the bag. Much better prepared physically than he was for the proposal in this fight. Mancini, likewise in great shape, and his crowd comes alive as he flurries against the rope. There is Lenny Boom Boom Mancini, Ray Mancini's father. Ramirez has to get off those ropes. He's got to get that jab to work and move away from those ropes. Right now, he's not using his uh, straight left hand at all. Just that right jab. Well, for a guy that's fighting in the other guy's hometown, he sure isn't, isn't working very hard. He can't expect to win this thing if it's going to be a slide rule decision. He's got to go out and be a little more aggressive. Try and really win a round. Hasn't done that yet. And he talked about that in uh, pre-fight interviews. He talked about, uh, with the newspaper, he talked about uh, uh, making the other man work, trying to, to win the fight in his own hometown. That's what he's got to do. He's got to go out to win. He's not doing that here. Good combination by Mancini. Good right hand for Mancini. Snap back to head of Ramirez. Ramirez did not appear to be stunned by it at all, but Mancini got the leather on him. You know, Ramirez has that big knockout record, 47 knockouts in 52 fights. You have to really wonder if he's really got that big kick. He, could, he may change this fight around with one punch. But right now, the way it's gone, it's all Mancini. Mancini is certainly upping his punching pace here now in round number four. We have less than a minute to go. Busier and busier as this fight has gone along. Ramirez missed with the left hand. Now he scored the uppercut inside, but Mancini counterpunched effectively. Good left hand landed from Ramirez. Less than 30 seconds to go. That one blocked. Seconds now, round number four, scheduled for 12 from Portland, Ohio. When you buy a new in, in your own <laughs> round number five from the Packard Music Hall, 3,000 strong here cheering Ray Boom Boom Mancini on, the hometown hero from nearby Youngstown against. Jose Luis Ramirez is trying to win the North American Boxing Federation crown from Mancini. Of course, bigger things are in view for the winner of this fight. A shot, a probable shot against Alexis Arguello, the WBC world champion. A lot of fights are won in the first five rounds because uh, one man establishes control. And it may be the case here because Mancini has established control with Mancini all through the first five rounds. These fighters still have made it easy for referee Joey Bishop. And any concern uh, that the Ramirez camp might have had about a local referee so far have been unfounded. Uh, he's been doing a good job. Yes, he has. Anytime you don't see the official, you know he's doing a good job. He doesn't have to break these guys at all. Look at this action. And Cheney landed the combination, but he hasn't appeared to really rock. There is a own Felix looking on, the manager and trainer of Ramirez. Must have some concern, but like his fighter, a very stoic appearance. Good left hook by Mancini. One of the reasons that uh, Jose Luis Ramirez hasn't clinched is because in Mexico, where he's had a lot of his fights, it's against the rules to clinch. Not only is it against the rules, but the fans don't let you out of the arena alive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think that's more, more has more influence than the rule does. You come to fight every night down there. Good right hand from Mancini. He's been landing them. He must be a little bit frustrated that there hasn't been more reaction from Ramirez. Apart from seeing his head snap back, he just rubs them off and comes right back. But Mancini keeps up the pressure here in this fifth round, and less than a minute to go in the round. in his 53 wins. 
the gentlemen he knocked out are not exactly household names. I suspect not even in Mexico. But he is very a, a good boxer. We've seen that in the Sanchez fight and again so far here. Final seconds to go. In round number five. He's making some nice moves side to side. Six from the Packard Music Hall in Warren, Ohio. On the right of your screen is the NABF champion Ray Mancini. On the left is the challenger Jose Luis Ramirez, circling out of the right. Yo, you were talking about Mancini's movement in round five. Yeah, he's not just running straight in because he throws a combination, takes a little step over to the right or to the left, and then throws that second one. He, there he goes again. Beautiful movement. And he goes in from the angle. He takes the angle by moving to, to one side or another, and then he throws his combinations that way. John, he hasn't uh, gone to that inside pressure that you expected against this southpaw, and yet he seems, at least the way we're looking at it, seems to be in command anyway. I expected because of his inexperience that he needed to keep uh, his opponent on the ropes, and that way he would not know whether he was a southpaw or a right-hander. But he hasn't done that. He figured out the style very well, which tells me he's sparred many rounds with the southpaws. Well, he had a real good one from New York. Martin Palm, the New York Golden Club champion, gave him a lot of good work. A good uppercut by Mancini. Mancini has landed a number of clean shots through these first five rounds in a little bit, but he has not been able to really move Ramirez with him. Ramirez has just plugged them off as though they've had no effect on him at all. Ramirez takes the power out of the punch by pulling away from the punch. He goes, rolls with the punch. There's a good right hand. Another good right hand from Mancini. Ramirez is fighting one now. Well, let's find out if he has that big kick. He he got landed right hand. Well. Lee landed for Mancini and another one. This is halfway in the fight, and he's got to put together a good offense in this round. He knows he's behind, and he's got to start scoring. I know it, and you know it, Sean. I don't know if he knows it the way he's fighting. You know, he's very he's, he's stoic. He's, this is showing a lot of fire. But he has been very content with backing off and not uh, throwing any punches at all. Maybe because he has no ros rosin. I'm talking about Jose Luis Ramirez. I'd like to alert our stations along the line at the end of this round. We'll take another 30-second station break. Just a minute to go, round number six. Mancini starting to use a right-hand lead a little bit more. He is a converted right-hander. Left-hander, pardon me. But, you know, he gets away with that right-hand lead because it doesn't look like Ramirez is trying to drop that left hand in there, that straight left hand. And that's the punch that he could hurt Mancini with if he could land it. See that beautiful move? That was a beautiful move by Mancini. See the combination? Stepped off to the side. Less than 30 seconds to go as he continues to step up the pace of his punching as his fight has gone along. Mancini is starting to land to the body much more in this round. That'll have a telling tale in the last few rounds, especially in a long 12-round fight. Final seconds of round number six. We'll be back with the seventh round after these words from your local station. This round number six. Mancini, as I said, went to the body much more in this round. That was a good right hand. That one knocked uh, Ramirez back on his heels. That's what you want to do with a southpaw. You want to put him back on his heels, and then there's a good body punch. Look at the way he, right he, hand. he throws combinations. Wings. Yeah, uh, Mancini throws in combinations, which is very good and very smart. He starts off with a combination of the body, and he comes up to the head. Round number seven, live from the Packard Music Hall in Warren, Ohio. And there's the best combination pulled by Ramirez since the fight began. He landed both of them. And Mancini landed a good left hook in that combination. His left hand should be his strongest because he is a converted southpaw. Right hand from Mancini. Another right hand. Ramirez counter-punching, but not with any real effect. Mancini stays on. It's amazing how Mancini's able to land that right-hand lead almost at will, and he doesn't have to pay for it. He comes in a lot of times, he's wide open, but Ramirez just can't pull the trigger on that straight left. WBA champion Sean O'Grady is driving the action for you on CBS Sports Sunday. Next week, two Bantamweight championships. Jeff Chandler defends his title on Saturday. 
Lupe Pintor defends his crown on Sunday here on CBS. Yes, he's been well schooled on how to attack a southpaw. Sometimes he should give that shoulder fake, pops a right hand lead. Next time it's the left hook right underneath the elbow. He's got this kid, he's got this other kid confused, and he's doing almost anything he wants in there right now. Again, we'd like to remind our local stations we'll be going to a, another 30 second station break at the end of this round, the seventh. Ramirez is getting away from the long right and left of Mancini. I have to, give a, have to give a plug to Murphy Griffith here, Amos Griffith's uncle. He's done a real good job of, of getting Mancini ready for the south floor, I'll tell you that. He's done a super job getting him ready, and uh, Mancini is so sharp, too. You can tell the detail. You can tell by all the detail and the stamina that he's got that he's been uh, totally prepared for this fight. John, let's assume that you're Ramirez. What would you be doing now, the way the fight's gone for Mancini? I would jab a lot more. Got to get that jab working. The southpaw is... Uh, he, he hurt Mancini with an uppercut then, Sean. He shook him up a little bit. I'd use that. Go back to the well. If something works, use it again. Go back to that uppercut and start that jab to working. You've got to keep uh, Mancini out of the distance. Now Mancini's coming inside a lot more and digging the body. When he digs the body, he drops both of his hands. Good right hand by Mancini. To the jaw of Ramirez. Less than a minute to go. Back to under 30 seconds now remaining in round number seven. I like the way Mancini came back. He got hit with a real good uppercut. He, but he just let this guy know, look, I'm the boss in here. You're not going to do anything with me. He'll be back in Warren, Ohio with the eighth round of the championship fight after these words from your local station. This is CBS. All right, here's a look at some action from round number eight with Mancini on the attack again. Good left hand. And again, no counter from Ramirez. Ramirez is very content with uh, just staying in there, just uh, hanging in there, getting hit, not throwing any punches, no counter punches at all. You're listening to the voice of the WBA lightweight champion, Sean O'Grady. Ramirez has been ready to go here for round number eight. Round eight. He's not been really hurt at any point. Neither fighter has. But Ramirez has not landed any real clean shots as, Man he, as Mancini has in the early going. Ramirez has been unable to really rock Mancini except for that one uppercut. Ramirez has not taken a deep breath also. Which tells me that he's not working hard. He's not trying. Well, his trainer told me that he ran six miles in 34 minutes, and he said he didn't, at the end of the six miles, he didn't take a deep breath. So you know he's in condition if he can do that. Maybe we ought to make a marathon run now. And landed for Mancini. Uppercut right hand from a mirror score. Speaking of running, Guayo and O'Grady passed each other on the streets of Youngstown yesterday, and they didn't see each other. Two lightweight champions out for a job in Girard, Ohio, a suburb of Youngstown. I wonder if the people along the street realize there were two world champs running by their front doors. Good boxing fans here in Youngstown. They all uh, waved at me and honked at me while I was running. Very good boxing fans. Good right hand by Man City. That right hand was right on the inside. A lot of trainers uh, school their fighters to throw right hands against that car. First clinch of the fight. They're both starting to get a little tired now, wear the tail on both fighters. Mancini apologizing to Ramirez for an inadvertent low blow. We're in the eighth round, scheduled for 12. It's NABF lightweight championship. Mancini, pressure, pressure, pressure. It's amazing that the, 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 the Ramirez shows no emotion whatsoever. If he gets hit, if he's, he's hitting the other fellow, he just has a real steady pace about him. Ramirez landed a good left uppercut in the sixth round, and he hasn't gone back to the well and used that uppercut again. He should use it and use it and use it until it quits working. Under a minute to go on round eight. Ramirez has lost only twice. The split decision to Arguello, a knockout defeat at the hands of Ruben Olivares, his former idol. And that was years ago, Tim. 1978. And hasn't lost. Except for the Arguello thing, as a lot of people say he won. 
Right hand by Mancini. Snap the mirror. headed back again. Less than 30 seconds to go in the eighth round. Ramirez definitely looks better than he did against Okoa Sanchez, the fight that he won. But we've got him without winning a round in this fight. He just hasn't done enough. Mancini, much busier, much more effective the way we see it. Final seconds of round number eight. This insurance. Tim Ryan with WBA champion Sean O'Grady and Gil Clancy watching Ray Mancini defend his title against Jose Luis Ramirez, who is rated above him in the world rankings, but is the challenger here today. And gentlemen, uh, have, have you given a round of Ramirez at all? No, I don't think Ramirez can win anymore unless he scores a knockout, Tim. And on that point, if I was working in uh, Mancini's corner, I'd say, when you get inside, don't pull out. Last round, a couple of times, he threw, he threw combinations, and then he pulled out. And Ramirez was set and just missed a couple of real good punches. One punch can still win a fight. I'd be a little careful if I was Mancini now, because he has a big lead. I also don't believe that Ramirez has won a round. I think he needs to get a good, uh, strong punch going here. Not, not, uh, not a good flurry, but a good punch. And that's the way he could do it, Sean. If, 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 if Mancini pulls out as he just did then, and this guy closes his eyes and lets one go. That's why, when you, you know, when you're the trainer, you're always one. True, and Mancini does keep his hands very, very low. One has to be impressed with the maturity of 20-year-old Ray Mancini and just his 20th professional fight. It looks like he's had a lot more than that. Perfect fight for Mancini. Perfect fight for him so far. I don't know what more the crowd wants. He's winning by himself. Now this night, we're trying to get more work out of him. There are Roberto Duran and Alexis Arguello, a former champion, a current champion, and two certainly of the very best boxers of our generation. Between rounds, the corner of uh, Jose Luis Ramirez, his corner man Ray Raymond Felix and Ernest Fuentes were begging him to throw punches. Again, Mancini landed three or four good punches, Sean, but then stepped back Step in back. a straight line. That is dangerous. Less than a minute to go, round number nine. He just seems to be the complete boss in there, though. He's got this fellow just, he, he's the boss, let's face it. It's possible that uh, Jose Luis Ramirez believes that he's ahead at this point. Uh, some fighters uh, that I know have that uh, in their mind that they get ahead. Well, that's what you have corner men for. They should still be telling them, hey, pal, somebody's in there hitting you and scoring points. Good head movement by Mancini. Less than 30 seconds to go on the ninth round. Come on now, Ray. Time winding down here on the ninth round. In addition to boxing today, you're going to be hearing from Brent Musburger with Pete Rose. Pete's comments on the ongoing baseball strike. That's live coming up on CBS Sports Sunday today. Aftate product that really works. It's Aftate for Jock Itch in the green can. Round number 10 of the scheduled 12-round bout. As we have viewed it, Tim Ryan with Gil Clancy and Sean O'Grady. Ray Mancini has not lost a round. Of course, the judges may have a different view. Two of them judging at ringside. Billy Tanner from Youngstown, Tony Mariano from Girard, Ohio, and Joey Bishop, the referee, will also score. You know, Tim, another amazing thing about Mancini, he's only had 19 professional fights. 18 of them ended in knockouts, which means he doesn't have much experience in the ring and for him to be into the 10th round of a fight and it's going to it looks like it's going to go 12 i don't think he's ever gone even 10 rounds as yet and he still seems very very strong he's an amazing kid well he said to set the record straight Gil, he's had 15 knockouts in 19 oh, wins your me. point is well taken he went only nine in the scheduled 12 rounder against morales that's that was his furthest that trip in the ring nine rounds now he's in he's into new territory right now in his 10th round Neither man has any telling marks on his face either. Uh, the only the only mark that either one of them has is the bloody nose uh, that Mancini owns. Yeah, he brought that into the ring with the nose. Come on. 
That's true, which tells me that uh, neither man is really, uh, although that Ramirez has taken the, the heavier punches of the two, neither man has really hit with great authority. Gail, just to, again, to set the record straight, this is the, the fourth time he's been in the tenth round. He won three ten-round decisions. Okay, wrong uh, one again. One thing we know about him is that, uh, you know, he trains wonderfully. He's in excellent condition as is uh, Ramirez. And he has shown the ability to go ten here with his stamina. And he still looks pretty fresh. There is Ray Mancini, close up. And round number 10, Schedule 612, the NADF Championship at stake. Mancini, the title holder. Less than a minute to go in this 10th round. Mancini is a real gentleman in and out of the ring. Uh, I noticed in a flurry a few seconds ago, he hit uh, Ramirez low a little bit and I uh, apologized for it. Smart kid, too. He graduated from uh, Cardinal Mooney High School uh, here in Youngstown with uh, honors, and he was the class president, senior class president. He is a true hometown hero. Less than 30 seconds to go. Now number 10. First time they've gone toe-to-toe -to -toe out in the middle of the ring. Uh, Ramirez has landed more punches in this round, though, Tim, than I think he has in the entire fight previous to this round. And they've not been able to get that good clean one that can move Mancini backwards. Final seconds of the tenth round. <laughs> this is round number 11 from the Packard Music Hall. We are live in Warren, Ohio. Nearby to Youngstown, the home of Ray Boom Boom Mancini. These are his people here today. One huge family pulling for him to defend his NABF title and go on for a chance at the World Championship. Jose Luis Ramirez still with other ideas, but he's got to make something happen big via the KO route. As we observe it here, Gil Clancy, Sean O'Grady, and Tim Ryan bringing you the action. This is the big round, always the round before the last round. Uh, because once a guy gets into the last round, he can usually go those three minutes. If Ramirez wants to do anything, he had better do it right now. It is still Mancini, the aggressor, however. He got move over to the side, Sean. Beautiful combination. Skipped over and threw another left hook underneath. Very good move, a sidestep. He goes in from the angle. Beautiful move. It catches your opponent off guard. Your opponent's looking the other way when you hit him. Yeah, Boom Boom's moving a little bit. Going more. good legs in the 11th round. How do you like that? And he's never been 11 rounds before. John, your uh, fellow champion, Arguello, aside, how do you rate Mancini among the top lightweights? He's showing us here today a lot of style, a lot of uh, determination. And uh, I'm, I know that Mancini now is uh, one of the top lightweights in the world. I had my questions coming into this fight. You're convinced now, are you? I'm convinced that he's a top lightweight. Mancini's fighting like he's behind. Another one of the few cl clinches that we've had in this fight. And Ramirez has been the one that's hanging on. Less than a minute to go, round 11. Ray Mancini continues to put the heat on. It's amazing. Anytime he wants, he can land that right hand lead. Now Ramirez belongs to uh, Ray Mancini. Mancini can do anything he wants to now. He's got him where he wants to. He can box, he can slug, he can get on the inside. Now Ramirez is the one that's tying up. Which tells me that Ramirez is... Uh, Either out of steam or something's wrong. Yeah, the, thing that's, the thing that's wrong is Ray Mancini, uh, Sean. He may, he may have knocked all these other guys out, but he's never been in there with a Mancini. Exactly. Sure. 15 seconds to go in this 11th round. Mancini seeming to want that knockout finish, even though he must know he's well in command on the scorecards. That 
the end of round number 11, and there are the fans here at the Packer Music Hall, their man in charge in this fight, and they come to their feet here with one round to go, acknowledging the performance of Ray Boom Boom Mancini, who has charmed not only this community, but all of America since his national exposure here on CBS against Jorge Morales, National Sports Magazine, attention last week in Sports Illustrated, and he has captured the fancy of fight fans everywhere. And barring a knockout by Ramirez in the final round, it would appear that Mancini is on the way to the world championship he wants so badly for his father, Lenny Boom Boom Mancini, who is here with him along with all of his family. This 12th round should be the most exciting round of the fight because both corners are telling their man right now, they're telling him, go out there and win this last round big. You need this last round. Even though we think the man thing is way ahead on point, he should go out there and try to win this last round because he's going to have all day tomorrow to relax, all day tomorrow to rest. This is the final round. But Number in many, 12. In many cases, in that final round, while one man's coming in, running in, trying to score the final round, he leaves himself open, and he gets flipped in many cases. Ramirez coming out with some purpose now in this final round. He's got to know he needs the knockout. But Mancini will just not let him connect with the big one. He's just worming him now. This is the style you thought he would fight from the outset, and it's sure working now. There's an uppercut landed from Ramirez. No damage done. But Mancini didn't need to use this style. Why is it effectively? Style. That's right. I don't. I don't understand the strategy here at all. I'm, I'm sure that his corner knows he's way ahead in the fight. He should be killing the clock. Instead, he's trying to do a job on Ramirez. Well, this is a macho display by both fighters here. Ramirez is desperate. Mancini just determined to finish in the same way that he started, all out. Well, that's what the fans like. That's what makes point cards. He just won't let Ramirez off those ropes. You know, it, it makes point guards, but it gives managers also. Look at him go. Beautiful combination by Boom Boom. He started uh, on the bottom, worked his way up to the head, popped uh, Ramirez's head up, and then came over the top of the right hand. Beautiful combination. He's a well-schooled fighter. Little blood from the nose of Mancini. It has been no problem throughout the fight. Certainly won't be now. We're in the final round. Little, whoa, Mancini fell as he tried to get close to Ramirez, tripped over Ramirez's feet. Right hand knocks Ramirez back. Less than a minute to go in the fight. It's amazing. Ramirez is really fighting now. This is what he should have been trying to do in the first round. Ramirez landed the right hand of the ear of Mancini, who kept coming. Chanting, boom, 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 boom. Less than 30 seconds to go in the fight. Mancini is just trying to throw as many punches as he can right here. Not so much trying to knock him out, but just put as many combinations together as he can right now. He has thrown caution to the winds for sure, despite his obvious lead. He's throwing punches to the final bell. Ray Boom Boom Mancini. There's Mama Mancini. And there's a look at some of the 3,000 partisan fans here in Warren, Ohio. This fight was sold out two days after tickets went on sale. The challenger, Jose Luis Ramirez, can't be feeling too good about the upcoming decision in this one. For Boom Boom Mancini saying hello and thanks to his fans, looking for his family, looking for his dad right now. He wants his father up there. 
and he's right above us saying, come on, Dad. And Lenny says, I'll be up there. We're still awaiting the decision of the two judges, Billy Tanner, Tony Mariana, referee Joey Bishop. Lenny Boom Boom Mancini is into the ring to join his son. You know, Tim, Alexis Aguayo didn't get his wish. He wanted to get revenge uh, on Ramirez because the people thought the fight was very close. He can get revenge. He can fight the guy that just beat Ramirez. And in my opinion, just beat him anyhow. Well, whatever Ramirez was able to do against Arguello, Alexis has got to expect a very busy fight if indeed he beats Ray Mancini in defense of his WBC crowd because this youngster has not fought a different fight in the 20 pro fights that he's been in. The only difference has been most of them have been shorter. But he gives you the same look every time out. He is a buzzsaw. Ring announcer Bob Roth gathering the cards. We should have the official decision. Joey Bishop votes 120 points, Manzini, 108, Ramirez. <laughs> Judge Billy Tanner votes 119, Manzini, 110, Ramirez. <laughs> Judge Tony Mariano votes 119 points, yep. Manzini, 100. performance did you count the number of punches you threw each round no not this time yeah uh, fought a little different at the end i knew i felt i was ahead so i didn't want to take care of stay on the inside smother his punches i could see he was getting a little tired make him throw and, and lean on him it made it look like i was tired but i wasn't didn't move you know but i wanted him to make the initiative last couple rounds because i knew he was going to be desperate ray some fighters in that situation knowing they're well ahead might try to stay away from the guy who's desperate well if he knew that then he'd be chasing me i might get caught so move, move, and sneak in. You know, when I see an opening, smother him in and out on him like I did against Morelli. You were confident when the fight began. Was there any doubt in your mind at any point? No, not at all. I mean, I was nervous, very nervous for this fight. He's a terrific fight. I didn't know a whole lot about him watching, like, uh, films. But, you know, you never know what the guy is like, going to do against, you know, when he's fighting you. Looks so, like you're going to get an opportunity against Alexis Arguello. Do you want another fight in the meantime, or are you ready for it? I'm, I'm signed for that. I'm ready for that. I want it. I want it now. Best. All right, don't knock yourself out of the mic. He's a terrific fighter. I'm going to train my my very best because he's a, I feel he's one of the greatest fighters of all time. And just to be in the ring with him is going to be a great opportunity, a great thrill. And, when, and if you know, I beat him, God willing, I'll beat him. It'll be the greatest thing in my life. Greatest thing in my life. All right, Ray Mancini, we think we've got Arguello here. Let's get his impressions. Where's Alexis? Alexis Arguello. Here we are. All right, champ. Here they are together. Clear this area here. Alexis, what was your impression of Ray Mancini? Well, I was like a kind of a judge. I was a given point, and I think he won the, 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 the 12th round. I just give him 10 to Ramirez. The, the, the 10th round, I give him even. But the whole fight was for Mancini. He demonstrated to his people he's a great, great fighter. That's what the, the people told me. And, and I hope uh soon we make a, a fight it's gonna be my well, pleasure we, we understand that uh, that that is a very strong possibility and we're happy to report that if and when it does occur it'll be here on cbs alexis uh, is he the best lightweight contender in the world in your view yes uh, he's young oh, he's uh, have a, a crowd and he love and i think we have a, a lot of uh, of uh, you know uh, pride you know he's a man with a lot of pride he have a father behind, you know, he have a family, he have a all his town. Are you afraid of him? Well, uh, I don't know afraid of, of the people because in the ring we're going to go, Mancini and I, 
The referee doesn't wear glove, though. That's <laughs> right. It comes down to you two. All right. Congratulations to you, Ray Mancini, and you're the champion, Alexis Arguello. And that uh, is another outstanding performance by this young man in front of his hometown crowd here in Warren, Ohio. The NABF champion Ray Boom Boom Mancini defends his crown successfully. And now let's return to New York and Brent Musburger.